Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days. So I have a couple of comments that I want to answer. First one, what is your take with AI taking over software engineering, software automation? And the second one, do you think the QA profession is dying right now or the next five years maximum? Uh, there's not much jobs as it was two years ago. People talking how the AI and chat GPT are going to displace humans and all QA testers. What do you think about the topic? Would be glad to hear your opinion. Okay, so even though I did see some pretty advanced AI recently that would build a page from scratch, in, like configuring servers, getting images. So everything done within minutes, like within minutes, like a full kind of a development DevOps thing happening with the AI. Um, I don't think we're gonna get displaced. Ideally, the system is gonna self-regulate. In the worst case scenario, if we have a very advanced AI, they can take over a lot of jobs, you have to have a system in place that will self-regulate labor. You can't just, you know, lose hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of jobs uh, and everyone going to go jobless. Or AI, let's think about AI taking over like driving, so self-driving cars, um, AI taking over like farming, shopping, uh, AI taking over manual labor so everything like let's say ai took everything so the whole idea of the capitalism right uh, to boost productivity right and to increase your margins increase your profits so if ai is everywhere no one is working how are you going to uh, get any profits out who is paying you for the goods if no one is making any money no one is paying anything for anything. So all of this productivity is just essentially useless, wasted to, for nothing. There's no one to pay for this. Uh, there's no, there's no, there's no point in any productivity if no one is buying it. One of the main thing that drives progress is the dollar, right? The economy that there is a continuous exchange of the goods with the monetary. Uh, fiat or i don't know exchange of goods and uh, and money essentially right so if that is not happening you know there's no progress there's no um there's no point of producing anything if no one's buying there's no profits so system will have to self-regulate and i know this is like a bigger picture of things of ai taking over everything but if we think on the scale of um advancement of the technology in the tech sector only so development and qa engineers what i think is going to happen there will be a lot of hurdles first legally and regulation wise uh, and second bigger companies tend to adapt uh, a lot slower uh, corporations for example and the third uh, the cost of, of it all like how expensive it's going to be to have a full scale ai operations so if we think about legality of things, uh, I will give you one example that happened recently. So Air Canada, they had a chat bot attached to their webpage and you can Google, you can go and read uh, Air Canada must pay refund promised by AI chatbot. So AI chatbot came up with a policy that didn't exist, it was Air Canada, uh, that they, they will refund the ticket. The, the the chatbot sent it to a customer on the web page. And then when the customer asked for the refund, uh, the company said, well, we don't have such policy and we're not responsible for the, whatever the chatbot said. So this case went to court and the customer won. So company is now paying the refund to the customer because of what the bot said. Now the governance of whole thing, the legality of this whole process is gonna build in the, in the near future. We're gonna have more and more cases like that that's gonna pop up, people are gonna go to court. So companies that apply AI will have to have legal responsibility to what AI says and does. So if no one's testing, there's no human person testing, it's all done by AI only, who is bearing responsibility? The company solely in itself. So a company could be investing millions of dollars in AI. AI screws something up pretty big. Uh, it says it's okay, it's been tested. It goes public and company goes bankrupt because AI did something. Uh, if there's no one controlling AI, how do you know that AI is good? If there's no responsibility, because if a, only AI is responsible for the quality for the product, there's no one responsible. Who are you gonna handle accountable? The company itself, the business, or the developers behind the AI. So there will be a lot of legal and standards establishing that could take years, five, 10 years, right?
Uh, the second thing is corporations in general. If you ever worked in the big corporations, corporate settings, banking or healthcare, things are so far behind in corporate world, it's not even funny. Um, you always hear news about star startups doing some very advanced things like new tech, all of that stuff. But you go into any semi-regulated corporate structure, let's let's say healthcare or banking uh, or any other semi-regulated big corporation, you will see the things that they do. A lot of them are done like through spreadsheets, sending faxes. Uh, there is a standard that supposedly, you know, uh, is designed to save people time and money. So uh, electronic data interchange, EDI, if you worked in the EDI, you probably know if no, well, that something is being used. And this standard is more like of a set of rules and regulations that people different places apply <laughs> differently. So they don't exactly work as expected. So you have to have human beings reviewing those and making sure that not of none of the failures exchange happening because of how those uh, standards were implemented. It's not a joke. So they they have a standards in place that have to you have to have people managing those standards. When when there's an electronic exchange happening in documentation exchange between like Walmart and some other entity, they might have applied it differently and followed the guidelines differently. So there is there is a lot of. Uh, you know, overview, review needed uh, for, for something that should be like ideally automatic. Or think about uh, healthcare in the United States, right? So you need to do some prior authorization for a procedure. Uh, you know, your doctor tells, you know, you need to, to do some surgery or whatever. This prior authorization in order to insurance to say it's okay, we're going to pay for it. Like you send a fax. Uh, you fax all the details, what needs to be done, and it gets back to... So takes weeks, might not be approved, might be some other measures in place before you, it can be approved. But it's like, you know, it's it's very, very inefficient, right? Uh, it's not like instant API exchange, it goes through like paper trail, right? There, there's, a, there's a need for that legality, recording stuff. Um, so yeah, sending faxes, like in the in year 2024, they send faxes. Uh, and most of them doing like that. I'll give you some other very simple, um, very simple example. I was getting, trying to get a doctor's note for my kid for the kindergarten that it's okay for the kid to return to the kindergarten. And we went to the doctor. I didn't get the note immediately. Um, I asked the office that I need the note to bring to the kindergarten. They said that you need to send us the request somehow or whatever. So we did send the request and I had to like fax the request for the record release so for, for the patient, uh, for my daughter. So it was at the doctor and uh, it's okay to like, maybe there was some, there was, there may be some other movement, some other legalities of like transferring records or something that doesn't matter. The, the thing that I remembered is I send them the fax. I had to like buy software to f send a virtual fax. And I'm there at the office. I'm asking for their papers based on that fax. I'm standing right there. They receive the fax and the reception telling me, well, we have a policy that um, we review faxes in the next 48 hours. So what she was telling me pretty much, I have a fax right here, but you have to wait 48 hours before I can give it to you. Um, and that wasn't like a big corporation, but it's like some medical network, essentially, right? So ridiculous. Um, and it's all over the place. So say that AI yeah, going to get in there and just fix everything immediately. No, it's, it's not going to happen like that. Corporate is going to be adapting probably a lot slower than smaller startups. But then can the smaller startups adapt it? Because they're cost-based, right? Uh, all of those AIs, they cost... Uh, money, money to run. A lot of it may be done right now on like promotional basis, uh, or maybe there's a competition development, but when they're going to be monopoly in the standards, uh, they will have a price established for the usage. Uh, so in order for them to be profitable to provide the UAI, they have to charge you a certain amount of money. Uh, and if we take a look at what happens with monopolies in the United States, so for example, let's take a look at the cable companies, right? Uh, all of the world has fiber 
has a gig internet for like 60, 40 bucks. Let's talk about Korea or some other places. Like really cheap and fast internet. United States, until up like a couple of years, it started changing now. But for 10, 20 years, they, most of the places in the United States still had very slow DSL uh, internet. So essentially like cable internet, not fiber, but very slow, like 10, 10, 10 times slower than fiber on a good day. That would cost hundred plus dollars to have a month. So Monopoly taking over, not willing to invest into upgrading the infrastructure in place, established prices that kind of you know uh, was a setback for overall speed in connectivity. As a result of that, um, mobile infrastructure kind of developed faster. Like right now, you can have a five G internet with a provider. Just get a router that's going to connect to your uh, mobile network and have a faster internet in some places than your cable internet and cheaper uh, i mean that's the consequences of the monopoly establishing the rules uh, without upgrading as long as they can so some sort of monopoly in ai will also be established right at some point uh going to be two three players they're going to charge a good sum of money so i don't think everyone will be able to afford it it's not like we miraculously going to have ai and that's it we're done right no one's working uh we all scrambling now ai does everything and we figure out how we pay for that stuff not really all right so that that is like on grand scale of things uh from like real world perspective what i see now if we go just in terms of like quality assurance and development what i think is going to happen yes we will have ai uh doing some of the work maybe some of the DevOps stuff, maybe some of the development stuff, but they're still gonna have seniority that will manage that AI and look over the AI and fix stuff when AI doesn't fix stuff. Same thing with the testing. AI most likely gonna be another component of testing. So you have to do your like regression, you have to do your uh, UI, you have to go and do your exploratory testing, you have to do test it from user perspective so a real person actually visits the product. Uh, takes a look at the product, make sure that the product works as expected. And maybe you will have a, an AI doing something there, very fine. Some other things like, you know, because uh, it's just gonna become a step, right? Step of, of verification. It also could be that AI does something. There will be a reviewer that signs off that, you know, everything looks good. Kind of spot checking after AI. AI also could be just helper in general, helping you to create, tailor your automation cases, tailor your testing scenarios. Um, right now, there there was a decrease like in uh, producing articles and writing things uh, and people got laid off because AI is doing some of the text online. It's gonna last for a little bit, but then you have this text that is all the same. Like if you go and search, uh, through LinkedIn posts when people reply with like congratulations or stuff or you know considering some some of the articles they put out you can immediately see like who used chat GPT it's all the same very similar it's same wording same same way of building sentences so if thousands of people and thousands of people use the same product you just see okay I know this AI I'm not gonna use this so right now you can start spotting like articles that AI written those articles they're not authentic. Um, they're gonna devalue with time. So if a real person is writing something, then they're good at it. It's uh, eventually, I think it's gonna cost more because it's gonna be like an art, art form kind of, right? There's original painting uh, that costs million dollars. And then here's the AI painting that generated millions of different images. Uh, you see it's AI generated. So where do I see, to answer the question again, where do I see development, uh, AI taking over software engineering, software automation. There will be some changes. Uh, most likely AI will be part of the process. Uh, it, will be, it will become one of the tools that will be used continuously with development and testing. Uh, but there are also gonna be some regulations attached with the AI usage that is gonna establish itself in five, 10 years uh, and still I think the jobs are going to be there because you have to have a real person. If you don't have a person, no one's responsible. Job-wise, I think we're safe. Uh, we just have to understand and see how the changes are unfolding and kind of adapt uh, 
with the changes. Like I suggest, you know, try prompt, go uh, AI prompt, go and consult with chat GPT. It was the free version when you were writing test cases, like, or um, also don't forget you have to, like some technologies die off, like through through the time frame of uh, tech industry being available computers, right? Some languages got forgotten, you popped up, some technologies are no longer used. So that's a normal part of the process. So maybe AI gonna um, turn off some things, but it will turn other things, like other positions, other jobs, other tools, right? That's my point. Um, so what I know for sure, AI is bringing changes. That's 100%. Now, what I'm very uncertain of, and I highly doubt it's going to happen, AI going to take uh, away everyone's everyone's jobs or tech jobs, and there will be no need in development or testing. I don't think so. I think it's it's just changing. Uh, the landscape is going to be somewhat different, and you will have to adapt um, to work with the tools with the AI. Okay. So this is my opinion. Let me know what do you think in the comments. This was Alex. You say days and bye bye.